a lot of ways, this dinner sums up my first two years in office. I'll talk for 10 minutes, take zero questions, and cheerfully walk away. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just announced my re-election campaign. Some of you, some of you scooped that I'd announced in the video. But really, you really all thought in your heart that I just blurted out, didn't you? <laughs> And look, I get that age is completely reasonable issue. It's in everybody's mind. And everyone, by everyone, I mean the New York Times. <laughs> Headline, Biden's advanced age is a big issue. Trump's, however, is not. So that was the New York Times pitch spot. I apologize. I love that guy. I should do an interview with him. <laughs> you might think I don't like Rupert Murdoch. That's simply not true. How could I dislike a guy who makes me look like Harry Styles? <laughs> call me old. I call it being seasoned. You say I'm ancient. I say I'm wise. You say I'm over the hill. Don Lemon would say, that's a man of his prime. <laughs> Folks, it's wonderful to be back here again, proving I haven't learned a damn thing. <laughs> I want everybody to have fun tonight, but please be safe. If you find yourself disoriented or confused, it's either you're drunk or Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Pam, thank you for hosting us. I love NPR. Because they whisper into the mic like I do. But not everybody loves NPR. Elon Musk tweeted that it should be defunded. Well, the best way to make NPR go away is for Elon Musk to buy it. <laughs> and that's more true than you think, anyway. <laughs> this dinner is one of the two great traditions in Washington. The other one is underestimating me and Kamala. Well, the truth is, we really have a record to be proud of. Vaccinated the nation, transformed the economy, earned historic legislative victories and midterm results, but the job isn't finished. I mean, it is finished for Tucker Carlson. What are you wooing about like that? Like, you think that's not reasonable? Give me a break. <laughs> Just give me a break. Look, like I often say, don't compare me to the Almighty, compare me to the alternative. <laughs> we added 12 million jobs. That's just counting the lawyers that def defended the president. <laughs> had Ron DeSantis, I had a lot of Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis jokes ready. But Mickey, <laughs> but Mickey Mouse beat the hell out of me and got there first. <laughs> Now look, can't be too rough on the guy. After his re-election as governor, he was asked if he had a mandate. He said, hell no, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'll give you time to think that one through. You got it? Look, y'all keep reporting my approval ratings is 42 percent. But what do you, but I, I think you don't know this. Kevin McCarthy called me and asked me, Joe, what the hell's your secret?
I'm not even kidding about that one. <laughs> the Speaker's trying to claim a big win this week. But the last time Republicans voted on something this, that hapless, it took 15 tries. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Look, it's great the cable news networks are here tonight. MSNBC owned by NBC Universal. <laughs> Fox News owned by Dominion Voting Systems. <laughs> Last year, your favorite Fox News reporters were able to attend because they were fully vaccinated and boosted. This year, with that $787 million settlement, they're here because they couldn't say no to a free meal. <laughs> and hell, I'd call Fox honest, fair, and truthful, but then I could be sued for defamation. <laughs> it ain't nothing compared to what they do to me. <laughs> Look, I hope the Fox News team finds this funny. My goal is to make them laugh as hard as CNN did when they read the, read the settlement. But then again, CNN was like, wow, they actually have $787 million? Whoa. Folks, I go where people are, The Daily Show. Roy's a great guy. He once dubbed me the Jay-Z of Delaware. <laughs> Don't let that look in your face, you did. <laughs> Tonight he asked me to keep it short, even offered me 10 bucks if I'd keep it under 10 minutes. That's a switch, a president being offered hush money. Look, I'm going to leave the jokes to the pros, but let me conclude on a genuinely serious note. Roy was born in Birmingham, born in Birmingham Alabama. He graduated from a great HBCU, Florida A&M. He started in journalism to follow in the footsteps of his father, Roy Wood Sr., who covered the Civil Rights Movement. During Black History Month this year, I hosted the screening of the movie Till. The story of Emmett Till and his mother is a story of a family's promise and loss and a nation's reckoning with hate, violence, and abuse of power. It's a story that was seared into our memory and our conscience, the nation's conscience, when Mrs. Till insisted that an open casket for her murdered and maimed 14-year-old son be the means by which he was transported. She said, let the people see what I've seen. The reason the world saw what she saw was because of another hero in this story, the black press. That's a fact. Jet Magazine, the Chicago Defender, and other black radio and newspapers were unflinching and brave in making sure America saw what she saw. And I mean it. Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells once said, and I quote, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon the wrongs. Turn the light of truth upon the wrongs. That's the sacred view, in my view. That's the sacred charge of a free press, and I mean that. That's what someone we still miss so much, who you honored posthumously tonight, stood for. Gwen Eiffel. You know, she was among the very best we talked about at the table. She moderated my first debate for vice president and was a trusted voice for millions of Americans. 
Quinn understood the louder the noise, the more it's on all of us to cut through the noise to the truth. The truth matters. As I said last year at this dinner, a poison is running through our democracy and parts of the extreme press. Truth buried by lies and lies living on as truth. Lies told for profit and power. Lies of conspiracy and malice repeated over and over again. Designed to generate a cycle of anger, hate, and even violence. A cycle that emboldens history to be buried, books to be banned, children and families to be attacked by the state, and the rule of law and our rights and freedoms to be stripped away. And where elected representatives of the people are expelled from state houses for standing for the people. I made clear that we know in our bones, and you know it too, our democracy remains at risk. But I've also made it clear, as I've seen throughout my life, it's within our power, each and every one of us, to preserve our democracy. We can, we must, we will. I'd like to make a toast, if I had a glass. <laughs> My grandfather, Ambrose Finnegan, said, if you ever make a toast without liquor, you got a hole in your left hand. <laughs> Y'all think I'm kidding, I'm not. I'm probably the only Irish you've ever met who's never had a drink in his life. Anyway, I'd like to make a toast, seriously. At this inflection point in history, let us commit that we'll be a nation that will embrace light over darkness, truth over lies, and finally, finally, finally restore the soul of the nation. Hear, hear. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can I give you that? Yes. I'm going to uh, turn us over to Roy. Roy, the podium is yours. I'm going to be fine with your jokes, but I'm not sure about dark branding. It's all yours, pal.